Hi, guys. I'm Bart Robley, and I'm here with two of my really good friends, Chip Ritter and Rick Stojak. Hi, guys. How you doing? Hey, good. we're How fantastic. You doing? Fantastic. Hey, so uh, today we're doing our first video um, here from our studios, our own personal studios. I'm here at my home in Fullerton, California. Chip's out in Tucson. Rick's down in San Diego. And uh, we want to talk to all the drum teachers out there about this uh, this new project that we're working on, and it's called, uh, we're calling it Drum Teachers at Play, or DTAP for short, and what it is, it's a, it's a drum teaching forum, if you will, and it's about helping each other, how do we, and, and many subject matters, and today what we wanted to talk about was, first of all, introduce what we're doing and invite drum, pe uh, drum teachers to join us, uh, kind of talk about how it all started, and uh, we also wanted to, uh, you know, just kind of talk about how we get students and how we, you know, held on to our students and, and stuff like that. The way the whole thing started was uh, a few months ago, I was out on a hike and my phone rang. It was my buddy Chip out in Tucson. And he said, hey, I want to have a, I want to have a Zoom meeting with you. I have an idea. Okay. So we set up a Zoom meeting and Rick got involved and here we are, drum teachers at play. So I'm going to throw it to Chip. Chip, what was your original idea on this thing, number one? And then talk to me about how you get your drum students. What do you do to advertise yourself as Chip Ritter and pick up drum students? What do you do? Well, thanks, Bart, man. I appreciate it. The, the genesis for the idea for Drum Teachers at Play basically came from a couple books I was reading about mastermind groups. There are people in the world that are very successful and they have like a group of masterminds, close circle of friends, where they share their resources and experience, strength and hope in their endeavors in life. And they kind of pool their resources as far as information. And what I was thinking was we could get together, us three, you know, with you, me and Rick Stojak and pool our resources as drum teachers, mainly for me was to improve my business. So I could get more drum students, so I could do a better job being a drum teacher. And so I could just basically improve the goals, improve upon the goals that I've already set for myself. So that's basically what I had in mind is pretty, pretty much predatory self-interest, man. I wanted to build my <laughs> drum business. So that's fair. <laughs> with that said, the, the, the things that I kind of came up with was, was number one, how do I get more drum students? I use what I learned from Brian Tracy. He's a motivational speaker on YouTube. There's a bunch of free videos about him out there. And he's got some things called brainstorming plans and things that he does to brainstorm. And that's what I used as my example. If you pose the question to me, say, Chip, how do you get drum students? I would do what I call a five by five exercise. I write down the goal or the question on top of the page. And I wrote down literally on a piece of paper, which does many things. When you write something down on paper, it's tangible. It, it becomes real. It's something that I can use and look at. It doesn't just go away. And like a note on the phone, when you skip to the next page on your home screen, that note's kind of gone. When you have something written down on a piece of paper, for me, it's like it's sitting there. It's really, it's really there and tactile and keeps it on the forefront of my mind. So number one, I would say get out a piece of paper and write down the question, how do I get more drum students with a question mark? Then I come up with five ideas and I'm just shooting off the top of my head. What would be a good idea? And like number one, I wrote down again, and there's no wrong answers in a brainstorm. This is just my process. Number one, Google, how do I get more drum students? Uh, another thing I could do is make flyers. I just came up with that and wrote it down. Number three is DM people in my area and ask them if they know anybody who would like to take drum lessons. And then number four, I came up with do a local drum clinic at the store, at the drum store. And number five, get on the phone for 20 minutes per day with this specific goal in mind. And so those were five things. And so what I'd say is you take that those five things and then you take a separate piece of paper and you write down your first thing. I know this seems a little tedious, but you'd be amazed at the ideas that you can come up with. Forcing yourself to answer five more ways to answer each of those specific ones. Like example, how do I Google, you know, how to get more drum lessons? Well, one, I could open the laptop and Google it. Duh. 
but I could then have ideas. What this does is force your brain to get more ideas. So the next thing was search how to generate business leads. That might be a good idea. Search how to get more guitar students. Maybe guitar student teachers have advised other guitar teachers how to get more students and there might be information for me that I could apply that to drumming. Search how to improve your business, your teaching business. Post in groups were a, a couple good ways you know, hey guys, what do you think are a couple of good ways to get more drum students? I could post that in Focus Goop. And, you know, and again, each of these has a page where I have those ideas. And so that's basically what I do to get more drum students. I write a five by five exercise, write the question on the top of the page, answer your best five from your gut, even if they're stupid, you know, you're going to end up with 25 different results than you had when you started. And out of those 25, there might be a couple, two or three really great ideas. One of those that stood out for me was do a drum clinic at the local store. Because if you do a drum clinic and you have flyers and your business cards, then you, people come in for free and they get exposed to the clinic material. But then they also have an opportunity to meet you and shake hands. And it's just a great networking opportunity. And that's a way that I've gotten drum students before. Fantastic. Wow. That's great, man. That's, that's a lot. And I never thought of the five by five. That's, that's outstanding. And I do agree with you a hundred percent on something. And that is that, you know, when you write something down, you know, and it's, it, whether it's a goal or just you, you write it down, it's real then, you know, it's, it's, it's like you said, it's, it's there, it's in front of you. It's tangible. It's right there. Yeah, write and, it down. Yeah. Writing it down. Something about, Something about that old school putting pen to paper, right? It just, it's magical. It really, that's really cool. Those are some great ideas. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Rick, what about you, buddy? What do you do to, what do you do to get students and, uh, and, you know, get your business going? What did you do? Well, hey, I want to thank both of you guys for having me here and Chip for setting this up. Um, it's, it's just total. a total honor. And I tell you what, you two guys are such go-getters and you've got such a passion for drumming and such a passion for teaching. And I, I really feel that, that if you have that passion and the love for the instrument and love sharing it, the success is going to happen. You just have to stick to it. Um, the game plan of, hey, I want to be a great drum, you know, a busy drum teacher and a great drum teacher, that's not going to happen uh, in a year, you've got to give yourself plenty of time and just and just stick to it. So, um, Chip, you're such a go-getter, and I just I just love that system. Writing everything down, you know, and that creates a goal for you. And and I think having goals um, is is really really the key to the success. It's been well documented in in so many books and so many stories of very very successful people. And so. Um, that's, that's fantastic, Chip. And I see you follow through with everything you do with that, you know, with your fundraiser for breast cancer, um, stick it to breast cancer. Um, it's just, just a huge success. So, um, so thanks for all you're doing for the community, guys. And um, one thing I've noticed, too, is, is that uh, drummers seem to be very cooperative rather than competitive. And um, Very much. So, yeah, you know, there are drum circles, you know, you don't see flute circles. Well, maybe there are somewhere, but, but, you know, the spirit of helping one another out is, is, it's just fantastic. And, and cooperation is going to definitely get us, get us very, very far um, in this world, no matter what, what we're doing. So, um, so that leads to, you know, building up the business. Well, one thing is, is I do become friends with the local drum teachers here. And um, I might have a thing that, uh, that I offer that another teacher um, doesn't and vice versa. So um, I've shared drum students um, locally. And then now everybody's doing online lessons and, as well. So um, uh, the world's our oyster for who we want to refer um, and, and so, um, I think anything that's going to motivate a student, um, is, is great. Even if that means giving them off to another, another teacher. So, um, one thing that's really helped me out was actually making a, uh, Yelp profile. Um, 
Yelp seems to be the number one way these days that everyone is looking for um, services, not just, just restaurants. So um, you, you can't really ask someone to do, do a Yelp profile or, or do a review for you. Um, I think it needs to come in organically. If Yelp um, gets inundated with reviews where you had no review and then suddenly there's 20 reviews in one day, they'll block them. They know it's contrived. Um, so it's got to come, come in really, really organic. So, um, and then Chip, definitely doing drum clinics will definitely help. And I think just being seen anywhere in the drum community, um, that includes going to all the drum clinics. Um, and not only do I go to all the drum clinics, I try to get all of my students to come out to these clinics too. And um, even old students maybe who are kind of just dabbling with, with drumming at, at this point, just to get them back, back in the game. And then drum shows, you know, go to the drum shows and even better, set them up, set them up yourself. I've, I've hosted um, a lot of the great drummers um, here at my studio, Zorro and Daniel Glass, um, my brother-in-law, Gene Hoagland. And um, it's great. Now we can do that all online. Bart, I know you've done that with uh, Dom Famulero. You had a, had a master class online. Yes. And um, so, yeah, the list goes, goes on and on of, of, of how, how we can evolve. But I th just really think that we need to really, really make it fun. And you have to brand yourself. Um, um, you know, like make, make your vibe, make your look, make it, make it known what, your, um, what it's all about to come study with you. Um, you definitely, I think a strong website is really, really important. Um, and then, um, you know, just the more activities that you have and the longer you stick with it, it's gonna eventually, uh, come out successful. So Bart, what about you? I know you are one busy guy. You do a lot of online teaching. You do a lot of recording. Um, and yeah, man. We're How doing do you a do lot it of playing. Bart Cave. <laughs> yeah, we love well, the Bart Cave. I would take the camera off of the the stand, but it'll be a mess and it'll look it'll look horrible. I will uh, uh, not the studio, but just moving the camera around. I'm not prepared to yeah. do that. So, yeah, that's awesome. That's, that's great advice. So I'm gonna start like you did, Rick uh, and Chip. Thank you guys for involving me in this. Uh, when Chip called me and said that, hey, you know, I want to do this drum thing and this is what I want to do. I'm like, I'm all in. No matter what it is, I'm in. Let's do it. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, the way I've gotten my students is much the same way. Uh, you know, I have the Yelp page, and I agree, you can't. Uh, I do ask my students, you know, from time to time, hey, if you wouldn't mind doing a Yelp review for me, I'd really appreciate it. And, and, and especially if it's a, a, a new student, or if it's a uh, like a one-time student, because I'm sure you guys get those two where like, I just want to take a trial lesson and see if I like mm -hmm. it. Um, I'll always say, yeah, sure. If you wouldn't mind doing a Yelp review on your experience, you know. I think uh, that's maybe, fair, yeah. I do too, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah. And then Chip turned me on to Google My Business, you know. And so I've been doing that. Also, you know, I got to say this mm -hmm. before I go any further. If I'm in the in the video here, if I'm looking up like this instead of at the camera, that I'm, you guys are on a big screen up there, so I'm I'm actually looking up at you. So I just I, I tell all my students that. So when they're playing and I'm going like this, <laughs> they're not like why is he daydreaming? I'm actually looking at you guys on the big screen. <laughs> So anyway, yeah, that's, you know, that's how I do it through Yelp, Google My Business. I also think word of mouth and having a good reputation as a teacher and somebody that, uh, that uh, is able to teach and wants to teach is important. Uh, I think that, uh, yeah. Rick, you said something super important, and that is having a website. You know, uh, a friend of mine said one time, and it, it was very simple but very poignant, he said, uh, he said you know, the, the, your website's your front door to your business. I was yes. like, yeah, you're right. You know, so you got to have a good website. Um, I think that that's really important. And then I also think, yeah, you know, I think drum clinics are super important. I've gotten, I've gotten students through doing drum clinics. A lot of students are doing drum clinics. Uh, I agree. Hosting drum clinics and hosting drum mm -hmm. clinics, uh, you know, with, with other drummers. I think I, I agree with you with, well, all three of us obviously agree on this, that networking together is so important. Mm -hmm. um, 
it seems like, yeah, there are drum circles and yeah, I haven't seen, <laughs> I haven't seen a flute circle. That was awesome. Um, I've never seen a flute circle. I never saw, I saw a flute at a drum circle once though. But you know, you know, uh, a drummer seem to have this vibe and this thing, you know, yeah. there's not a, there's not a competition thing, you know, it's more, yeah. Hey, how did you play that? And then they'll show you type of deal. Right. And, and so I think that, uh, that sense of community and working together is important. I have, I have, uh, mm -hmm. um, one of the guys that I asked to join drum teachers at play, my buddy, Rob Farrell, he's in South County. So Rick, he's in between you and I, he's down like in yeah. the area. It's a great drummer. Oh, dude, his left yeah. hand. Holy cow, man, that cat can play. Yeah. His left hand is phenomenal. And if I get a student that wants an in-person lesson, but they're down there, I'm like, Hey, you know what? It's going to take you an hour, two hours in traffic to get to me, you know, call Rob, you know, he's, he's like yeah. right around the corner from you. I think that's important. You know, mm -hmm. I think it's important because in turn, they're going to do the same thing for you, you know? Yeah. And uh, so I think that's important. And then I also think that, um, you know, and this kind of goes without saying, but uh, you know, be out there playing, be doing gigs. You know, I get, you know, mm -hmm. I haven't played a gig since March because of this COVID thing, but, but I get, I get students all the time uh, from people coming to gigs, they see the show and they're like, Hey, how do I sign up for lessons? And I always have a stack of cards in my, in my uh, stick bag and, you know, stack of out. cards, stack yeah. of cards. There business you go. Yeah. Cards. Yeah. Write that down. A stack of there business cards, you know, yep. you know, um, one of the other things that I do is all three of us are authors here. Matter of fact, here's a plug for all three of our books. I've got, here's my book, School of Hard Rocks. That's and look at your book. branding. Show them, show yeah. them your logo, man. Exactly. I like, I like your logo. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So there's that. That's and fun. I put my, my BR logo on everything. And then here's Chip's book, the man himself, Snare Force One. Snare Force Snare One. Force One. Wow. Look, at that. Look at that. And then here's Rick's book, How to Build How to a Drum, Drum Groove. Groove. Look at that. Yeah. That's a fantastic book series, man. That's a, yeah. that's a great idea. If you're a drum teacher and you're watching this, get Rick's book series. Get that book, man. It's going to save you, you time and energy with your students. It really is. Uh, it's a great book. And, um, but what thanks, I do guys. is in the back of my truck, you know, I have a, I have a couple of my books. I have this, I also have a snare drum book, uh, rock and pop and snare drum. I have a couple of my, in my car and you know, Hey, this is a book, but it's also a business card and somebody saying, Hey, I'd like to That's take right. drum lessons with you. Well, here's my book, you know, go home, check it out. Give me a call Monday. So I do that. And, um, and then at the and and then yeah, hosting master classes and, and doing all that stuff. And I think, uh, this goes without saying, but again, I'll, I'll leave it at this. I, I remember one time, uh, God rest his soul, I remember the great Pat Torpy from Mr. Big. He said to me uh, one time in a, uh, at NAM, I met him, and I'm a big fan of Pat Torpy. And he goes, you know, at some point there's, you know, there's just, it's taken for granted that you can play, that you're a good player. When you're in the business and you're teaching and you're out there working, it's just taken for granted that you can play, right? And so yeah. that was pretty simple to me. And so I've always kind of taken the approach that I don't care what the gig is. Uh, if I'm playing, you know, Joe's bar and grill for 50 people, or we're playing, you know, an outdoor stadium and there's 4,000 people, I'm going to, I'm going to give you the same Bart Robley every time. And uh, I do the same thing in my lessons. Or I try to, and yes. uh, I do the same thing in a recording session and I think all that carries over. Uh, success follows in the wake of a lot of hard work. And uh, like you said, Rick, and I, and, and that's, you know, I think all of those things are how I get drum students. Nice. So hopefully, nice. I, hopefully I hit on some subjects there. You know, when you were talking about that, Bart, uh, the, the thought came to mind, one of my old friends and mentors of mine in the entertainment world taught me a lot about branding and marketing and networking. And he just opened my eyes to a lot of things. He was a wise man. 
he used to have these little sayings. I, I, I need to start a book and write those little sayings that he wrote down and make a calendar because there some of them were, some of them are genius. And when it comes to the question, how do you get more drum students? I could hear this guy say, you know, the last time I found my keys, I was looking for them. <laughs> and <laughs> that, are you looking for drum students? Are you engaged? Are you on the phone? Are you in your contacts list? maybe calling up, and these are ideas that came from this brainstorm as well, and I'm gonna act on these more because the, you know, I realize I have not been spending, tw set a timer and spend 20 minutes on the phone every day with the goal of getting more drum students in mind. That leads me to text messages, old students that have gone on and, and started their own teaching business, maybe talking to them and engaging them in conversation. Little ideas like that will come up if you're actively looking. So make sure you're actively looking to get more drum students is a great tip. Yeah. And I think uh, I had a, for instance, I had a student uh, that just left last year. At, uh, his, he graduated in 2019. Everything's so weird with this COVID thing. I'm like, after really, <laughs> when was it? He graduated in 2019 and went off to college. And uh, so a lot of his students because he was one of my students and he also taught they came to me well with the COVID thing he came back so a couple of the students stayed with me and took lessons with him a couple of them went back mm -hmm. to him no problem and uh and he came back to you know to me for lessons and even though uh it was online it kind of turned into this thing where now he's like, well, you know, now that I see how well the online lessons work, when I go back to college, you know, when I get back into school, I'm going to go ahead and, and do some lessons again, right? I'm going to do some, I'm going to do some lessons. So uh, with you online, when I'm back in college, I'm like, okay, yeah, that works great. You know, the online lessons do work really well. And yeah, yeah. like you said, you got to be, you got to be actively looking for it. You know, you do have to be actively looking for it. And I, and at the end of the day too, I think you have to, it's like anything, you have to offer a good product. And I mean, you know, you got to offer a good product in lessons and yes, you know, everything, you know, if you're, if you're not giving a good lesson, people aren't going to stick around. They're going to, you know, they'll take one or two lessons or one or two months and they're out. Um, yeah. I have some students yeah. that have been with me for 10 years, yep. you know, so Rick, yeah. what about great you? Logo, well, great they, they can not gonna help if you don't have a good product. You're right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, can have the, no you, can have the, you can have a great looking car, but if the motor ain't running right, it ain't yep. going down That's the road, it. you know, hey, Rick, I'm sorry. I interrupted you, Rick. Oh no, no, fine. Um, it's fine. Chip. Um, you know, students know whether you're into it, they can tell. Yeah. And and that's how you're going to build your business. If you truly love the instrument and love teaching it, um, you just you just can't phone it in. And and um, teaching is a really really noble noble profession, no matter what it is, and it makes you sharper. And um, you just have to kind of stick to it. And and it's it's. Okay, I think if you have a day job and you're trying to um, develop your teaching, you know, you can't just say, hey, I, I, I don't have the time, you know. For, for years, I had a corporate job and I was teaching. I was, was working, I was teaching four nights a week and on Saturdays and working my day job. And eventually it just built up. And then between gigs and teaching, um, I became full time and I just stuck with it. But you know what? It's okay if you have another source of income. Um, so many professional musicians um, are earning money um, in other ways, and that's okay. So I just don't beat yourself up um, if if you you're not doing it full time. But if you stick to it, it's it's gonna happen. Yeah, I There's I no agree. Doubt. I I I totally agree. I um. It took me years to build up my business. And my business mm -hmm. is, is, you know, as are all three of ours, is all encompassing. You know, I don't just yeah. make a living as a teacher. Right now, my main source of income is, is teaching. 
Uh, but I, I'm an author of books. Uh, I do recording yeah. sessions. I do a lot of live performances when we had live performances. Um, yeah. uh, you know, I, you have to, it's, it's kind of like you, you have to wear a lot of hats to make it work. Um, yeah. I want to touch on something uh, and I don't want to turn it into like a, a soapbox thing, but We've all talked about this in our meetings, uh, just so everybody knows. This is obviously we've been doing these Zoom things for a couple months now so that we were poignant in what we wanted to talk about before we recorded a video. Uh, we talked about teaching, and, and you just touched on it. It is a very noble thing. And, and Chip and I were talking. Well, we were all three talking one time, and Chip said something that was I want him to say again. There are some people that, that have said, um, you know, those who can do, do, and those who can't do, teach. And my answer to that was, well, I, I remember one time sitting in a studio with Greg Bissonette, and there was all these platinum records on the wall, and there was a Grammy <laughs> over there. And pretty sure that cat can play the drums, and he didn't just need my hunter. He loved giving me that drum lesson. Chip, what do you say to that if somebody ever says that to you? What's your answer to I, that? I just go tell Michael Jordan that at one of his basketball camps. <laughs> <laughs> or go tell Steven go tell Steven Spielberg that when he's teaching a class at UCLA or whatever on film you know Thank you. that's ridiculous yeah. that's ridiculous yeah I know where it comes from I understand it there's there it's it's a it's a way of thinking but again you know back full circle to the topic of how do you get drum students you have to have a good product and you're not going to get a good product unless you can play so, you know what I mean? It kind of works out in the wash. If you stay committed to getting new students and focus on your craft and don't give up, do it every day, show up every day, you'll get new drum students. Completely, completely. There All right, is. guys. I there think that's is. about our wrap for our first, uh, for our first DTAP video. How did, how did we do? Did Woo! we do good? I think we did okay. <laughs> Rick, what do you think? I think it was a blast and I just hope that um, other drum teachers find this beneficial and that younger guys are encouraged to get out there and start teaching and um, helping, helping younger players evolve drumming is just so rewarding. It's so fun. So uh, we're here at your service. So you can contact any of us anytime if you want to talk about any of this and um, I think it'd be great to have some other drum teachers in on some Zoom calls. Yeah. And uh, and just sort of like build this up. It'd be fun. We're going to be doing some live streaming. So uh, let's yeah. uh, we're going with some great drummers and great drum teachers. Chip, what's your website, buddy? By my website is chipritter.com, and you can Google me all day. I was just going to also say, if you're interested in joining our closed Facebook group, DM one of us and let us know where you're teaching out of. And we'd be happy to send you an invite to get in on some of this DTAP. <laughs> awesome. Rick, DTAP. what's your website, buddy? DTAP. What's your website? Rick, rickstojak.com. S-T-O-J-A-K. S-T-O-J-A-K. Feel awesome. free to contact me about anything that you want to talk about in drumming. Very cool. I'm here my for you. My website. Sorry, I didn't mean to step over you, man. My website is bartrobley.com, B-A-R-T, just like Simpson, and then Robley, R-O-B-L-E-Y.com. Same thing. Reach out to me. Reach out to any one of us. Two other fantastic drummers and drum teachers here. Guys, thank you so much. This is a long video, but that's okay. We'll see you in the next one. It was our first video, man. We're, if we're going to fail, we're going to fail forward, baby. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> We got a lot to say. <laughs> See you guys. Thank you. Go get them. Thanks, everybody.